Welcome back, everyone. I'm Robin from This Blog's Neat and Rum et al. And we're going to do some math today. Actually, I'm going to do some math so that you don't have to, but I'm going to show you my math. Now, I got myself one of the Viver air stills. It's not really technically called an air still. It's a water distiller machine, and I have been testing it out. It's one of the ones that has the temperature program built into it, which has its pros and cons, and this is not a review of the Viver Air Still. I will post a video about that soon, but I just wanted to note that it is, the pot does have a, a temperature control system built in. And today I was running a spirit distillation. So I had put in low wines that was at around 32% ABV, a little low, but totally fine. Again, this is just me testing out the machine to see how it works. And I asked the question to myself of what should I set the pot temperature to? What should I set the body of this air still to heat up to? And the boiling point of that liquid is going to depend on the ABV of what the liquid, right? So if it was 100% water, the boiling point, assuming that we are at one atmosphere of pressure, like normal standard pressure, is going to be 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if that is 100% ethanol, which you're not distilling 100% ethanol, but if you're trying to boil 100% ethanol, the boiling point's going to be around 173 degrees Fahrenheit and 78 degrees Celsius. But a mixture of ethanol and water boils somewhere in between that. And it is not a linear relationship, meaning you can't just draw a line between 212 and 173 and then assume that the ABV puts it proportionally on that line, right? Does that make sense? And there are luckily for us some boiling point diagrams out there that show how the boiling point changes with mole fraction of ethanol in water. And I am sure that there is a chart out there that is has converted those data points from mole fraction into ABV, but I couldn't find it easily. And I ended up doing the math myself. And what that math ended up telling me I should set my air still to actually worked. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how I did those calculations and also provide you with a chart that has been or a graph that has been converted from mole percentage of ethanol to ABV or alcohol by volume, which is what our hydrometers measure. It's what our refractometers measure. It's what, if we've got an Anton Parr, that's what that measures. So if you are a distiller, this is a chart that is much more beneficial than the one that shows you boiling point based on mole fraction of ethanol. Some things to keep in mind though, is that the temperature at which your pot is set to is not necessarily going to indicate when liquid is going to come off. This is going to be dependent on the size of your pot, the amount of liquid that's in there, the size of the swan neck, the angle of the line arm. Do you have any deflegmators in the neck of the still? Do you have any columns? how high, how long is that swan neck? I maybe already said that one. There's a lot of things that are going to impact whether or not the boiling temperature equals liquid condensing off the still, but it's working out for my air still right now. So <laughs> another thing to keep in mind is that if you are also distilling a wash or with other things inside the pot, right? If it's not just purely ethanol and water, which of course, most of the time it isn't just purely ethanol and water, this is also going to impact the boiling point. So this is kind of a rough estimate, but if it were pure ethanol and water, and if you're running something similar to an air still, that's kind of a crude distillation where the 
condensation is happening right above where it's boiling, right? There's not a huge swan neck and not a bunch of reflux going on, then yeah, this, this calculation and this graph is going to be really beneficial for you. These numbers could also be used as a good starting point for kind of the minimum of what you should set your pot temperature to be, right? Does that make sense? Like if you have more reflux in the still and everything, the boiling point will be the same, but you'll need to crank the power up a little bit more to get you know, those vapors to actually travel through the neck of the still over to the line arm down through the condenser. But that means that it's never going to start condensing at a lower temperature than what this number says for the ABV that you have in your still. I hope that all makes sense. Uh, so yeah, anyways, let's, let's dive in. Um, so as I mentioned, I found a graph that shows you the boiling point of an ethanol and water mixture at varying ethanol mole fractions. And I wanted to get the actual data off of that chart so that I could convert it into ABV or alcohol by volume and convert it from degrees Kelvin to degrees C and degrees Fahrenheit, degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier because I'm not operating in Kelvin for, for my distillations. So a tool that you can use to do this is the plot digitizer. So literally type in plot digitizer into Google or go to plotdigitizer.com. You're then going to click the free online app and all you need to do is upload an image of the graph where you're trying to get the data points from. From there, you are going to set the X and Y axis by putting X1 at the beginning of the X axis and X2 at the end of the X axis. You're then going to type in the values for X1 and X2. So in our case, that's zero and one. And then you're gonna do the same for the Y axis. So move Y1 to the bottom of the Y axis and move Y2 up to the top and then type in the values for Y1 and Y2. That would be 350 and 374 for us. Then you're just going to click on points and you're going to try to click perfectly in the center of each of these points, but you're gonna click on the points that you want that data point for. And this is going to find out where that lies on the X and Y axis based on where you put the X1, X2, Y1, and Y2 values. So here I did that for every single point along the liquid composition curve here. Again, I tried to do my best and get in the middle of each of these data points. And I'm going for the data points here rather than the trend line. However, if you have a graph that doesn't have data points or something and is more a fitted line, and you don't for some reason have the equation to that fitted line, you could do a similar thing where you drag various points or, or drop various points along that curve. Okay, so once you get all your data points, you then have the option of exporting the data points. And I don't know why I exported into CSV. You can also export into XLX, which will open up in Excel. But I don't know, say you have a Mac and you don't have Excel and you download a CSV file, then the numbers app will pop up with that data. And then you can copy and paste that into any spreadsheet that you'd like. So now I moved the data points into Google Sheets and I was able to now do math. Converting the boiling point that's in degrees Kelvin now to degrees Celsius is super easy. You just subtract 273.15 from Kelvin and that gives you the degrees Celsius. To go from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit, you multiply the number by nine fifths and then add 32 and that gives you the boiling point in both degrees celsius and degrees fahrenheit depending on what you prefer to work with now abv is a little bit more complicated here going from mole fraction to abv but we can do it so you need to know the density 
of ethanol, the density of water, the molar mass of ethanol, and the molar mass of water in order to do this calculation. And this is density at like normal STP, normal standard temperature and pressure conditions. So for ethanol, that's 789 grams per liter. And for water, that is 1000 grams per liter. The molar mass of ethanol is 46.07 grams per mole. And the molar mass of water is 18.02 grams per mole. So in order to get from the mole fraction of ethanol to ABV, I'm just going to show you the, the calculation I did. I'll just put it right here because it's easier than saying it all. But you're taking into account the density of water, the density of ethanol, the molar mass of water, the molar mass of ethanol, and that based on the mole fraction of ethanol, you can also get the mole fraction of water. So I took those data points from the original graph, converted that into a graph that shows you ABV, boiling point versus ABV of the liquid. So I had a, I had low wines that were at like 32, 33% ABV. And for simplicity's sake, let's say it was at 32 and a half percent ABV because that hits right at 85 degrees Celsius on the boiling point graph right here. And that is what it boiled at. That's what it, it started coming off the still at. So it's cool that I can now use these charts and I don't have to constantly convert from mole fraction to ABV. I've done it for you guys. So again, this number is kind of like view it as like a starting point. If you have an air still, like it's a great starting point. You're probably going to get distillate coming off the still when you set your boiler to this temperature. But if you have a still that has a lot more reflux, then yeah, you're, you're probably going to have to set the boiler of your still a little bit higher than that number, but this is a good starting point. Yeah, I hope this was a fast and fun video and I hope you learned a couple of things like that you can digitize plots. <laughs> online and maybe you learned how to convert from mole fraction of ethanol to alcohol by volume i don't know if that's useful to you but maybe now if you actually want to get the numbers and the graph that i created i have put it over on patreon you can find it there i have it so anyone can view it um, as long as you're you are a free member or above over on patreon so head over to patreon become one of my free members if you're not already and you'll get access to things like this and speaking of patreon thank you so 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 much to my patreons that help to support this channel if you the viewer want to become more than just a free patreon member <laughs> i'd be really really grateful but if you also want to support the channel giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing, sharing it with your friends, leaving me comments, you know, all the YouTube things are really, really helpful. And I would greatly appreciate that as well. Let me know if you have any questions at all about any of the calculations I did here.